All right, well, uh, thanks very much, Tim. Um, my job here is to actually now set the stage for what it is we're going to be doing for the next uh, day and a half or so. Um, and of course, the reason we're all here is this whole idea of a personalized genomics informed medicine. Um, Eric didn't, if you noticed on Eric's slide that showed the strategic plan, that final right hand piece of it, there were just a few dots in the 2011 2012 range. So the folks here are really at the bleeding edge. And what Eric didn't say is that at the, for example, the retreat that they held to develop the final version of the strategic plan, there was actually a fairly robust debate about whether it was even time for us to be doing this. And I think um, to address the point of whether it's time or not, uh, I happened to turn on the television to look at the news this morning as I, as I was getting up, and lo and behold, there was an ad on the TV from a local organization that talked about using genomics to personalize the medicine at some local healthcare organization that I'm not even familiar with, not from this area. The fact that that was already on the TV just this morning says that the time is really right for us to actually be here and thinking about how to do it right. Because if we don't think about how to do it right, there's going to be a lot of people out there doing it. And what we're going to have to do with, deal with is cleaning up the mess of hype that doesn't actually deliver uh, what we need. So. What we do here today is really much more important than uh, just a few dots at the bleeding edge of the NHGRI strategic plan. So as you heard from Eric, uh, we have really three goals for the meeting. To collect potentially clinical, how do we think about collecting potentially clinically relevant variants? How do you decide whether they're actionable or not? And then how do we provide this information for clinical use? So I just want to pose a few questions for us to be considering as we hear all of the talks today. Uh, and tomorrow. Uh, and we've built a lot of time into the schedule for discussion. And you'll notice that several of the sessions are a moderated discussion that we hope to actually really engage the whole group in the room in, in a real discussion to think about how we would come up with answers to these questions. Now, while it would be great to actually answer all those questions in the next day and a half, that's probably a tall order. But if we can at least get some clarity about the questions, about the scope of the questions, and some outlines for how they get answered, that would make this a very productive meeting. So first of all, what are the criteria that need to be met to consider a genetic variant? Or I must say, I think a lot these days about patterns of genetic variants, where you know, we've got these whole GWAS studies that show a SNP that has a you know, 20% uh, increase a 20 percent uh, or 1.2 relative risk associated with it. How do we use that? But if you actually put it together with, I don't know, 33 other SNPs, each of which have some significance, you might actually end up with something that produces a very usable risk score. So we really need to think about what criteria. The other thing that we need to think about is a paradigm shift. Are we going to be able to actually do a randomized controlled trial for every single one of these variants? So we really need to think hard about the criteria and, and how do we do that. Do we really have available adequate data sets? Uh, Tim showed in the UK they're thinking about how to hold this. We're going to hear a whole session where we talk about uh, what kinds of resources are currently available. Are those adequate? Do they need to be modified? How do they need to be improved in order to be able to provide both data sets? and accessibility through uh, databases that are open and available, uh, and that provide, I think, importantly, the supporting data uh, that gives the evidence for why things might be uh, clinically actionable. So that's another important question for us to consider. What is it necessary to integrate that data and those bits of evidence into an electronic health record and then present it to a physician in a way that's meaningful. That itself is a huge task. Physicians already report what they call alert fatigue from too many things being popped up in, in the screen of their electronic health record. So how do we provide this additional information in the context of an environment where uh, physicians are stressed in terms of time and they're stressed in terms of uh, what they, kind of data they need to transmit in a typical seven to 15 minute uh, interaction? How do we create a dynamic loop that recognizes that 
this is really still an area of very, very active research. As we see more and more of these DNA sequences being done for, for both research purposes and for clinical purposes, how do we f make sure there's a feedback loop that adds that new information back into whatever data sets exist, version it so that the users at the end of the process actually know what version they're looking at and whether that's actually got the updated uh, evidence and information. <clears throat> what kind of decision support needs to be available to physicians? And what kind of education do we need to be thinking about in order to educate physicians to use this data? If you go to talk to most practicing physicians and ask them what they would do if somebody brought in a particular genetic variant that they had, th they say, I have no idea. And so that's a big hurdle to go from there to somebody that might come in with a whole genome sequence and a list of variants that they have to deal with. So we've got a big challenge ahead of us in terms of thinking about uh, all of those. So these are really topics for discussion today at, and tomorrow in this meeting. And, and I'll throw out one that's not a topic for discussion, but one that we've already heard in both Eric and Tim's uh, brief presentations. And that's that as we have more and more of these sequences appearing that were done in a clinical setting, where does the line between clinical action and clinical activity and research exist? And I think the blurring of that line is going to be a critical factor that we're going to have to deal with. And uh, actually, NHGRI has some other meetings going on, uh, one Monday and Tuesday, that I think some of you in the audience will be at, uh, which will also be thinking about uh, that question of how do we deal with there no longer being a bright line between clinical activity and research. So what we're going to embark on, then, is a series of, wor of workshops, and again, I want to emphasize that these are really meant to be interactive, so we really hope everybody will give us the best ideas they have, that provide perspectives on the existing genetic variation resources that exist. How well do they meet our needs? Are there things that need to be added to that? Current approaches for identifying variants for clinical use. How well do we do at that? When you actually sit down and try to think uh, what variants you might actually want to act on clinically, it's a pretty challenging problem. Uh, the answers are not so clear, and we're going to spend a lot of time uh, trying to work that through. Developing consensus for actually not only figuring out whether they're actionable, but figuring out are they almost actionable, are they certainly actionable, is going to be a really important topic for us. How do we create that loop? How do we make sure that the benefits of all of the wonderful research that's being done actually gets fed back in some kind of consistent feedback loop into this collection of actionable variants. And then how do we actually present that in a clinical setting and use it effectively? So a lot of big topics. I think it's going to be a really uh, exciting meeting. I just want to emphasize again the importance of everybody to participate and uh, give us your best ideas. So uh, with that, I think we'll begin our first session. Uh, which is looking at uh, existing resources. And I'm going to invite uh, Matthew Hurls from the Sanger Institute, who's going to moderate the first session.